I want us to listen to something that has been happening over the past few days, different parts of the country, but specifically these ones from the Rift Valley. <laughs> Mimi nataka niwaambie hivi. Mambo hii kulete mambo hii kwa mkutano mimi sitaki. Wase video? Mm. Ogaso. You people from Rift Valley, I want to appeal to you don't take the presidency for granted. Mimi naona mnaanza kuchezea hii kiti yenu. Na msichese kama rais amekuja kwa county nyumbani na ni rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya amekuja kuzidua mipango ya maendeleo kupanga maendeleo mnatoa rais kwa mamlaka yake na cheo chake kazi yake ni kuzuia vita wewe hapana vita kelele ni wewe jamaza mnaulizana nini sasa hiyo kazi gani tunafanya sasa mkilete si adhabuni ya ugomvi na kupigania viti uchaguzi uko mbali wewe unakomboa vijana kupiga kelele. Mwingine anakifu wa vijana kupiga kelele. Rais amekaa pale. Ile ilimlete haongei. Mkutano huwezi endelea. I'm going to call our leaders from this area. From our counties here in North and South. The Kenya city na hawa. So that they can explain to me what is the problem. And why they want to embarrass our president at home. Deputy President there, uh, speaking to leaders in the Rift Valley in Sydney, he's calling to call them for, a, he's going to call them for a meeting. What is going on in your, in your region? And wh why, I don't know whether it's early or why now? We must condemn such acts of uh, incidences, especially where the president is present and uh, all this fighting in the strongest terms possible. It is foolish, it is unaccepted, it is uncultured, it's uncivilized, and it is wrong totally wrong for, for people to, to, to heckle uh, when the president is there. Uh, there are so many things, uh, Sam, that are playing out, particularly in our region. Number one is there are politicians who are generally unpopular. The population, they don't do anything. And the population have a problem with them. They just wait when the president is coming to our backyard. They mobilize young people. They want to ride on the programs or that the president is bringing as their own programs. And that in the process becomes the issue. Because if someone is going to mobilize against me, for instance, then of course I also have to mobilize. In the process, we have two teams, or even three or four, that are at war even before the meeting starts. That is where the problem starts. Number two is that if any leader is unpopular, there is absolutely no reason to mobilize people to attend a function just so that they can cheer you in that function. Because that also comes with trying to show the president that I'm still popular, when in real sense, it is just uh, 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 um, you are not popular. Finally, and which is uh, the most important one, is that there are politicians from within our region who feel that uh, the president has a space of uh, 10 years. And slowly, they are starting to initiate processes of trying to say, you know, we also want to be part of the succession politics in their mind. I mean, they are talking about, and you've heard the deputy president speak about it so many times. There are, guys, there are people there, people who just want to start stories. You've even heard the president jokingly mention about some who want to be kings or queens in different areas of our, of our, of our backyard. Mm. It is unnecessary. Those are the things that are hyping the crowd unnecessarily. People are saying, you know, I want to be the Kipsugi's kingpin. Another one is saying, I want to be the Nandi kingpin or some kingpin, I don't know from people which area. That. So that people start uh, to start politics and projecting themselves for elections of 2032. Honestly, and a total waste of time. I really want to use this to rally and call on my people that it is unnecessary. Let us focus on delivering for our people. Let us initiate programs that will help our people. Like what the president said, there is no election that is going to happen between now and 2027. 
all we need to be doing now is to tell the people what are the projects that we have for them. You know, we have so many projects that we can roll out for the people. We have fertilizer to give to our people so that they can improve on their crops. We want to improve on our dairy. We want to improve on our roads. We want to uh, roll out connectivity over electricity. We want to make sure that uh, pe our people have water. We want to make sure that our people have proper infrastructure from all spheres. Mm. And all these other politics of one day is totally unnecessary. The president, however, gave a serious warning that if he's going to visit the region again, and there are going to be politicians who are going to uh, be uh, purchasing goons to disrupt his function, that any of that politician who is going to be mentioned will not be allowed to contest in our party. As, that is as, as clear as it is. So that Akuna Kujipangia Tena, people should be, popularity should be natural. And it is also an opportunity to ask all those leaders who are not performing to perform. You cannot just wait when the president is coming, then you start hiring people to come and, uh, and, 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 and shout. Totally disrupting a program. The president has to spend almost 10 minutes trying to calm crowds of people who have just mobilized for each other. It is totally unnecessary and uncalled for. I hear you, um, and there are a lot of questions that come up after that. But uh, you said that these unpopular leaders were trying to get at each other. Yeah, you see, who when because, because when the heckling has been particularly so for governors of Kericho and Bomet. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if it, it does not matter who is popular or who is unpopular at that point. I'm saying, generally, there are people who just wait for the president to come. They are hardly participating in projects before the president comes. And now, if the president tells you Ooh, MPs, that I will be, whether MPs or, or, or senators or, or governors, I don't want to point names on anyone. I'm saying this thing is not, cannot be one individual. It has to be a planned thing. You know, by the time people get a crowd, get and stand somewhere, and you could tell, and the president could tell. You know, when you're on top of the vehicle, you can actually see, you find a group of 20 young men there, you know, uh, hardly incoherent, can't listen to the talk. You can tell this is a hired crowd. But then there is that crowd that is, you know, that is organic, a crowd that just, uh, so, you know, so let, let, disapproves. Let's be particular here. So in one of those instances, it is Governor Eric Mutai uh, addressing the crowd, and he's heckled down. So who is this heckling him down? It is wrong. I mean, it is a group, uh, for, 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 for that capsule area, I do not want to necessarily point out on my governor, but there was a general uh, disapproval of, 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 of what was happening. There was, there was, there was a lot of tension uh, in both stations. And sometimes it's, when it's just local politics. You're confusing me. Uh, because you said these unpopular leaders were mobilizing. I said it is, it is, it is, it is a precursor of so many things. <clears throat> Number one, it is individuals sometimes who are unpopular. And when the president is coming, they decide, no, we must demonstrate to the president that we are still popular. So they ferry young people. And those ferried young people are given instructions that if so-and-so is going to speak, then you make sure that I outshine so him. So did Governor Mutai mobilize people to heckle him? No, no, no. I'm saying I'm not giving a specific case. I'm giving a general overview of what I saw in Bomet and Kericho that those could be the reasons why all those things are happening. Of course, no one exactly knows what really happened at that point. <laughs> and that is why even the deputy president, he said, is going to call for a meeting to understand what is happening. But I have said, number one, it is early campaigns by politicians. <laughs> there are politicians who already, so, and you know, our region is becoming extremely competitive, that immediately you are elected, people are starting to plan for the next general election. You know, honorable coach, yeah. it, it is OK, but um, you are very eloquent on what exactly is the problem. Yes. But on the specifics, you don't want to... Because I don't want to focus on individuals. About I, I've condemned, I have condemned the okay. acts of, 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 of right. hooliganism and, and I'll booing. I'll that as your response. That, that happened, yeah. Fred, I did not... Fred, what does this mean when it's happening in the presence of the president? Sam, President William Ruto is the party leader of UDA. That area predominantly voted for the UDA and for president. By the virtue that he is a president, he has got access to intelligence reports. And I know, if for sure what Honorable Kwachi is saying is true, that there are people who are planning against the other, the president should know that firsthand. And he should have mentioned it and called those people out 
on that same podium and told them, you, you, and you, you are mobilizing young people to come at cause chaos in the public baraza. That did not happen. But remember these chaos also, we witnessed them in Embu, mm. where people were being heckled. Embu? Yes. No. It was in Meru. Meru, sorry. Yeah. Not Embu. Meru, sorry about that. <laughs> in Meru, where people are being, or, 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 or being heckled. Now, in my view, it is about service delivery to the people. Yes. When a leader is elected, and this, maybe to protect uh, Honorable Kwech, me, I'll say this because this is the truth. I think the leaders that were elected, the public feel they have not lived to what they promised. And exactly. therefore, it is time to show the president that these people you gave us as our party leader through the Tea Party ticket, these are people that we don't want to see. And in the coming election, we shall kick them out. But remember, by extension, they're also saying that the regime is not doing anything about it. So there's a message they're sending to President Ruto. At the same time, there's a message they're sending to the local leaders. Now, if it is true, Horeb Koech, that it is a fight of supremacy battles among the local leaders, then again, it is important that the local leaders sit down and agree on issues. I saw uh, Governor of uh, Bomet mm. struggling, and around him, for sure, there were a group of people around him. When he was speaking, they were cheering. But when the other person was speaking from the other side, he was being booed. So it is true that there could be supremacy battles within. But how do you ensure that the supremacy battles are, uh, are finished? If you are elected as a governor, as a senator, as an area member of parliament, deliver to the people. When the excited crowd know that you are delivering, when those hustlers believe that you have lived to the promise and you are delivering, there will be no heckling. In fact, they'll be telling the president that here we have a governor who is working, we have a member of parliament who is working, and we love them and we'd want to support them more. But here they are showing disapproval. They're telling the president, mm. we have a governor who is not working. We have a senator who is not working, for example. So I think President Ruto knows who are these what they are doing, who is faring, if at all there is faring, and they must sit down. When Rigiji says that he's the one going to sit down with the leaders from Rift Valley and address the issue, while the president himself comes from that region and understands the politics there better than Rigiji, then I think it is better that Rigiji and the president meet them together to address that issue. But finally, there's also the issue of uh, 2027. Right. You do realize, Sam, that uh, it is likely that uh, the locals feel that uh, my payment your best. How about they start looking at the alternatives? Because they, what they were given, mm. I, I'm not sure how the, uh, the governor of uh, Bomet and the governor of Kericho got their ticket. Was it competitive? Was it a uh, direct ticket? If it was competitive, it then, was competitive. If it was competitive right. yep. then it is true that now people feel there's something they're not doing right. And they have an opportunity to correct that. Okay. They have opportunity. Oh, all right. Um, Horrible. Let's finish up with you because it has also happened in some parts of Mount Kenya. I think there was a bit of that in Kembu and as you rightly say in Meru. Um, so when you see such kind of things, because this, this are members of the public, whether mobilized or not, they are the ones that are expressing themselves. What, what is this symptomatic to? It is a purely banned political manners where politicians with different camps, camp A and camp B, they mobilize that I want uh, to be seen as the most uh, popular, serious politician in that particular function. Then uh, I have a political opponent also who want to ensure it also seems the same. Uh, so I think it's just um, bad political manners. We should be condemned. Mm. We should not be able to do that in a presidential function. President is coming uh, to outline what his government is doing in that region, for instance, for if it is Mount Kenya region. President is not coming to, to see who is more popular than the other. About the issue of uh, political strength on the ground, we yeah. can leave it to... <coughs> Uh, we do it at different functions, not uh, presidential functions. And uh, I agree with the uh, prescription by the president. And actually, it should be more tougher than that, uh, that in case I mobilize for echoing of another politician in the presence of the president, uh, I should not be even around to 
gain anything, any, pol any, any project, mm. a government, national government project, should not come to my area. If, if, if I have that kind of behavior, it's completely but, but, bad. It is something we should not have. But your problem should not be the problem of your constituents. Yes. Uh, you, know, you know, here it's not about the problem of the people. No, you're saying... It's, it's not about... It's not about if you mobilize to heckle... Yes. You, no development project should come to your constituency. Actually, it's not about the development project. The people are innocent. The people are completely innocent here. It is, so what are it, is, it is me as a politician deciding to go and buy beer and, I don't know, give some money uh, to a group of young people to tell them, what, once so-and-so starts uh, speaking, mm. all of you should you start uh, shouting. All right, That's exactly what happened in, uh, all right, all in, right. uh, in Meru. All right, Honabur. That's what happened in, in, in Gyambu. Let's take a look at the feedback that has come to us at Citizen TV Kenya Sam Gitsuko. The hashtag to use is a dead break on what Kenyans have to say about the three topics of the morning. Babu Michael, you're saying that even if the housing levy is signed into law, there are very many questions without answers about the uh, public private partnership kind of project. What are the exact amounts for construction of the house? Who is the custodian of the deducted funds? How safe are the funds? Um, how do I read your name? That one. Singapore is a country smaller than Nairobi City County and way smaller than Bomet County. How do <laughs> Kenya Kwan's MPs keep drawing comparison between Singapore and Kenya in terms of the housing program, viewing things from the wrong end of the telescope? Dombori, the panelists' disjointed answering reflects a glaring lack of understanding regarding the housing levy, highlighting the need for comprehensive education and informed discourse on housing program. Remy Butia, the affordable housing bills passage marks a crucial step in President Ruto's policy direction, potentially transforming Kenya's housing sector. As this legislative chapter closes, the real work begins. Implementation. Sawe, corruption in Kenya is deeply ingrained to the extent that elected leaders often secure their positions through buying votes. We can't rely on them to enact meaningful anti-corruption laws. Those involved should be barred from holding public office forever. Those are the views from Kenyans this morning. I have to thank you, Honorable Nelson Koech, um, Fred Okango, and Honorable Geoffrey Ruku for making time for us this morning. Thank you. To have this conversation. This has been at the break, and it continues after the break on matters. Uh, Sporty Monday, they'll be here to talk about the latest action and what you should be thinking about in the new week. Stay tuned. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.